Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I by profession I'm a practicing architect. I graduated from the University of Engineering and Technology in Bangladesh in 1983, and ever since then I am in practice. And uh, coincidentally or somehow, I got involved with. Uh, projects of the, you know, the NGOs of the non-governmental organizations mm -hmm. who are working with the development of the rural poor in the country. So among them, yeah, you may know about BRAC, yeah. which is a, the largest NGO in the country. So I got to came across their uh, executive director in 1985 and he uh, I mean, uh, commissioned us to design a training center, which is should be as cost effective as possible and within a very limited budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the site in which was about uh, what, 200 kilometers from Dhaka mm -hmm. on the northwest of Bangladesh, and where I personally measured the land. And then the reason I am saying all these things is that like, if you want to design for a country like Bangladesh, which is developing at the moment, but uh, about 30 years ago, it was not like that. It was, uh, I mean, it was a, uh, I mean, the NGOs were working for the development of the rural poor, as I, was, I have already said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the training centers were meant to be for the development workers of different NGOs, for them. So we made a very down-to-earth with very basic materials, basic uh, technology, which is available locally, mm -hmm. and it was, it was well accepted. And but you, may, you may say how this is related to nature, or, I mean, art. Actually, at that time, uh, we, we had a study group called Chetona. Chetona means consciousness. Mm -hmm. So we used to meet every week, twice, twice every week, to discuss the country's history, culture, heritage, geography, climate, mm -hmm. architecture, literature, whatnot. And yeah. we should invite people from all these uh, uh, fields to come and give their lectures, share their experiences with us. The reason was that we used to believe that uh, we don't know much about our country, or uh, I'm, I'm saying, our country because I have worked all my life in, in, in Bangladesh and not outside. I have designed only a few residences outside Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So that's how, I mean, we, we became very passionate about our country's heritage, culture, architecture, climate, history, and these things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, based on that, that we know that Bangladesh is a very, it's a delta, the, one of the largest mm -hmm. delta. And yeah. Two major, major rivers, like uh, the Ganges and the Brahmaputra, which originates in Himalayas uh, finally flows through Bangladesh to the Bay of Bengal. So it's mm -hmm. a delta, and it's, it, it, it's uh, I mean, in this delta, actually, the flooding is a seasonal flooding is a major issue. Then river erosion is a major issue. Mm -hmm. So these are actually uh, affects the livelihood and the living conditions of the majority of the population. So the, like in the this the summer, there is every year the seasonal flooding. So in 1988, there was a I mean, devastating flood all over the country. Mm -hmm. And after that, many of the villages were destroyed. So we went uh, on our own with the local NGO uh, to see the, what can be done to rebuild the village. Mm -hmm. So we worked with the villagers then. And uh, it was like the, it, 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 the villages were like a small islands or islets within the flood plains. In winter, they were dry. As architects, we started thinking what can be done with the participation of the villagers to, to improve their livelihood and things like that. So we, 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 I mean, came across with some of our friends who were, some of them were planners, they're then uh, economists, engineers. So we started thinking and the extensive survey, survey of the village. Mm -hmm. I don't think before that there was such a comprehensive survey of any village. That was one of the examples of how we actually, with nature, as I was saying, that with flooding and issues like that, I was, I was, uh, I was becoming uh, kind of uh, conscious and uh, aware of these uh, issues mm -hmm. since then. Then later on, again in 90, I grew up in the old part of the city. Mm -hmm. That was a kind of a very cohesive neighborhood. We were all the children used to play in the neighborhood courtyards, and it was really fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it was very really down to earth. And although the old part of the Dhaka city is, was even at that time very congested, very close knit. Houses mm -hmm. and well, but they were mostly one or two story buildings. But that maybe, I mean, subconsciously had some impact on me. And I loved and, and staying in my uh, house in Odhaka with my parents. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, when I graduated, since then, I mean, 
we were believing in like regionalism in architecture we used to call at that time it was a kind of a uh, uh, popular thing that how to make the buildings regionally it means that whatever you have the level climate culture nature uh, you respect when you build the uh, buildings according to based on those factors rather than i mean like a glass tower which is alien to our nature yeah uh, it's a glass tower office building which consumes about 40 percent of the energy of this whole the energy produced all over the world I and mean, these buildings it's said kind of, i mean against that I and mean, i prefer to use actually the the independence war in 1971 mm-hmm. actually uh, you probably know that uh, about uh, three million people were killed yeah. uh, in that war i mean they were brutally um, said killed mm-hmm. and uh, on the nature actually they uh, and also about 10 million refugees went to india mm-hmm. to uh, to avert the crisis or to I mean, to not to be, not to be get killed. Yeah. And so that's uh, that. I mean, it, it was kind of a big environmental problem on the refugee camps, not in Bangladesh at that time. But after the independence, there was again crisis about food crisis, famine initially because there was no aid, uh, and, and uh, people were all. I mean, uh, there was not much employment, things like that that affected at that time. But as such, environmental. Uh, I think like uh, may, many of the houses were burnt by the enemies, and uh, general people were killed and things like that. I mean, as such, directly it was not. I mean, as such, directly it was not affecting the environment, mm-hmm. but indirectly it was. Yeah, the famine, especially, I believe. So, like the, for the younger, I mean, I since I deal with younger architects and young students as I teach also part time. Mm-hmm. So uh, I always tell them that be conscious about when you design a building mm-hmm. is not to, I mean, uh, affect the environment. I mean, by retaining most of the trees in your facade, mm-hmm. then also make the buildings, uh, I mean, like uh, ventilated naturally so that it can uh, capture the breeze, prevailing breeze, rather than having air conditioned building which consumes mm-hmm. air conditioned consumes a lot of energy. So by yeah. that we can save our planet and and use simple materials which uh, does not affect the environment that way. That's how I actually that's how I actually try to convince them that be very passionate about the nature and they are in fact becoming very uh, this generation especially are conscious about their building, the structure they build and they're um, uh, they're very uh, sensitive about uh, uh, working in the natural environment. Oh, so could you give us an example? Example of a certain building, maybe um, that everybody knows about, or it's called it's called Mete School or Shikha School. Okay. It's in Dinaspur, the northwest of Bangladesh, which was designed by an Austrian young architect, Anna Herringer. Okay. Actually, she she showed that it is possible to build a, a complex with all the naturally available material rather than I mean importing materials from other countries. Okay. It was the walls, walls are made of rammed art. You know, rammed art and digging the site, they, they rammed the art and made the walls with those art, art and walls. Oh, okay. It's a two story so if, if, if you Google, you'll find that uh, it's called Dipshika School by Anna Herringer. Okay, we'll put uh, the link find, um, in the yeah, bottom of it. He used bamboo for flooring and roofing and every, doors, windows. and It's a very successful building and the villagers love it. <laughs> they really yeah, I mean, love this. They can build their structures based on the local conditions, local materials, rather than burning woods for making bricks, right. which is I mean, detrimental for environment. So it's a big problem in Bangladesh too, right? We have tons of those brick factories. Yeah, I mean, many of them, which is generating a lot of smoke and uh, releasing carbons, mm-hmm. carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, this brick. Yes. Yeah, um, so our third uh, question is, first experiment especially your mom as well sorry i mean uh, it's a your wife <laughs> uh, yeah, my wife yeah so uh, and she uh, and we, we, it was first experiment on top of on the sixth floor fifth floor uh, we had a part in the south we had a very green small patch of green mm-hmm. with, uh, with, with we call used to call it a bokul tree bokul is very traditional bangladesh uh, called used to call it a bokul tree bokul is very traditional bangladesh uh, a tree with a flowering tree. Mm-hmm. So it's a very, very mild 
I mean, uh, scent, mm -hmm. the flower had, and it was really nice in the evening. Then maybe all of my friends used to come and see the the root garden or the, or the terrace we had. Yeah. And it was, I still I still remember, and I really it was kind of a my, I mean uh, exhibit for the architects. I mean, they used to come and see the how I have done. But now many people do it. I mean, that could be uh, I mean, at the direction. Mm -hmm. uh, and the few artists at that time gave now and many apartments have got not many I would say some of the apartments in Dhaka has got their own terrace with green uh, grass roof grass and plants and trees so it, it has become a common practice nowadays to try within this urban living to have some I mean, piece of nature in your house at least you can see your, uh, it's kind of a therapy you see uh, in, in, in a city like Dhaka yeah I remember um, visiting the house I was one of uh, your architect friends, and he seemed to have a forest in his, in his like, you know, high high rise apartment, which was very interesting to see. He had so much uh, trees and greenery, and seems like a little bit of like a small. I enjoy living in a natural environment as mm -hmm. an architect. I mean, if, if only there is a shade on top right. of my roof, on top of my head. I mean, uh, that's I think it's for our climate is more than enough. I mean, you, you can you can take care of the winter with warm clothes here in Bangladesh, but but but, but with the shade from sun and rain, that's mm -hmm. enough. I mean, that's I mean I see as simply being uh, I mean which has been uh, I mean uh, practiced for generations in the country, and that I love and I think should be as an architect our goal to provide shelter without mm -hmm. affecting the nature and invite rather inviting the nature in your buildings and uh, having a lot of trees, plants, and gardens wherever you can. It's, it's it's very important like in a city like Dhaka, mm -hmm. it's totally built up. There is hardly any uh, surface which can, I mean, you know that uh, yeah. <laughs> water can park the parklet underground so that the 